Alright y'all, welcome back to the latest video and today we're going to be talking about Final Fantasy. Now, I've done a couple Final Fantasy videos in the past, but this one is going to be more directed towards a singular character pretty much. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite class in the entire game, the Dragoon. I'm going to be giving you guys my personal rotation that I use and I'm gonna give you guys pretty much just an overview and like my thoughts about the class in general and why I feel like you know you guys can definitely pick up this class and have a blast so let's begin so the Dragoon class first off starts as a Lancer let's take a look now the dragoon class first off has a soul crystal which transforms him into a dragoon without the soul crystal I am nothing but a Lancer which is the starting class for this you have to get the Lancer to level 30 to do a cla do class quests and unlock the uh, soul of the dragoon and as you see, you gain way more abilities when you have the Soul Stone equipped. And you also, you also gain, oh, you also gain the ability to use your class skills like jumping. But we'll get to that in a second. So, just wanted to go over that, exactly what a dragon is and where it comes from. It comes from the class Lancer, level up to 30, you do your class quests, and you unlock Dragoon all the way up to level 80. Now, let's go over some of these uh, skills. I, got, I know you guys are ready to see the skills and the rotation I use for this class, so let's get it started. All right, so we're gonna be using this training dummy at my uh, company house. Now, I don't really use a traditional rotation for Dragoon. I find more, you know, traditional rotations to be a bit more complicated than other people use. So I pretty much just use my own thing, my own like way of doing things, which is what I recommend for everybody. Figure out your own rotation that you're comfortable with, where you can maximize the damage and have a good time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys my personal way of of uh doing my rotation so let us begin with the first ability true thrust true thrust does an attack potency of 290 and also turns into raiden thrust but we'll talk about raiden thrust more later so right now we're going to activate true thrust here we go back up a little bit true thrust goes like this True Thrust. You guys see? That's True Thrust. Now, True Thrust can activate two procs. It can combo into Orpal Thrust and Disembowel. Now, you always want to start with Disembowel right after True Thrust during the first combo. This Disembowel does a type on C of 150, which isn't a lot, but if you combo it from True Thrust, it does 320, which is way more than 150. So, you want to go from True Thrust to Disembowel, 
and it also increases your damage dealt by 10%. So you always want to keep that active as much as possible. So you want to go True Thrust, Disembowel. That's Disembowel. Let's do it again. True Thrust, Disembowel. And you guys see the damage that it did? Now let's see what happens when I use it without comboing it. It does only that much. It only does like 7,000 damage. Except when I combo it, we get like 15,000 damage. So, you always want to do True Thrust, Disembowel. And the next thing you want to do, you want to use Blood of the Dragon. Now, this is going to be one of your most important abilities. Blood of the Dragon activates this gauge right here. You always want to keep Blood of the Dragon activated at all times. And it, you, it lasts for 30 seconds. And, you, and it gives you a plus 30% potency on High Jump and Spine Shatter Dive. And it also grants you access to the abilities Sharper Fang and Claw and Wheeling Thrust. Upon successful execution of Full Thrust or Chaos Thrust. And, that, and you can only use them for 10 seconds. Now, now we're going to start from the beginning and we're going to do True Thrust, Disembowel, Blood of the Dragon, and then we're going to go to Chaos Thrust. Now I'm going to I'm gonna tell you guys what Chaos Thrust does because this is what, how far we're going to go. So, Chaos Thrust does an attack potency of 100 or 140 when executed from the rear. Meaning when you're when you're behind an enemy, it'll do 140 potency damage. Before we continue that, it also has a uh, combo potency of 290, but increases to 330 when a combo from the rear. So you that's so it could go from either 100 all the way up to 330. That's a substantial amount of damage, y'all. If you guys are not hitting the positionals and not attacking and not doing combos, you are wasting so much damage potential. Now, that's not the only thing this does. It also gives a dot. Now, dots are called damage over time. We're going to call them dots. It does a dot potency of 50 for 24 seconds. And it, all, and it grants access to Willing Thrust. So... We're going to start from the beginning all the way up to uh, the first Willing Thrust. So, let's start with the beginning. We got True Thrust, Disembowel. And then we got Blood of the Dragon. Chaos Thrust from the rear. And now we have Willing Thrust which you want to do from the rear. I know it's a bit hard to attack with this attack dummy, but I don't really know where another one is from all sides. But yeah, that's pretty much what you want to do. So we're going to calm down for a second and uh, let you guys know what I just did. So when I activated uh, Chaos Thrust, it activated Willing Thrust. Willing Thrust is, uh, gives an attack potency of 340, or 380 from the rear and after you get through executing that you can automatically use fang and claw which is the same thing but from the flank so every time you do chaos thrust you always want to end off with willing thrust then fang and claw always want to pull those two moves off last so after that you then saw raiden thrust activate when you hit the last two positionals between Willing Thrust, Thing, and Claw, True Thrust will turn into Raiden Thrust. Now, let's go over what Raiden Thrust does. We're going to go to our abilities. Now, Raiden Thrust, Raiden Thrust does an attack potency of 330. It has no positional or anything. It can only be activated when you use the, do the positional on either willing thrust or fang and claw 
So, you always want to make sure you hit those last two positionals because 290 goes all the way up to 330. So, after so before we continue with that, I just want to let you guys know that is the first uh that is the first combo that we're going to do, the chaos thrust combo. Now we're going to talk about the full thrust combo. So, the full thrust combo we have true thrust then we're going to use vorpal thrust which does an attack potency of 140 or it uh, also does a combo p uh, potency of 350 remember to always hit the combos and then we're going to go to full thrust now before we use full thrust want me to explain it delivers an attack potency of only 100 but when comboed from Warful Thrust, it increases to a whopping 530 potency, which is one of your strongest abilities. Always combo this. Because look at here, only 4,000. But when comboed, it increases all the way to 22,000. It That's amazing, y'all. That is amazing. So, we ha that is our full thrust combo, and it also activates uh, Fanging Claw and then Willing Thrust in the reverse order from Chaos Thrust. So, Chaos Thrust activates Willing Thrust first, Full Thrust activates Fanging Claw first. So, that's what you always want to keep in mind. Is they're, all they're always the reverse of each other. So, Let's uh, start from the beginning. We're gonna go from uh, True Thrust, Disembowel, Blood of the Dragon, Chaos Thrust. Then we're gonna wanna hit Willing Thrust, Fang and Claw, Raiden Thrust, Vorpal Thrust, then uh, Full Thrust. Then you want to go to Fang and Claw. And then that. So, uh, unfortunately, I am unable to hit the la uh, last positional because of the way this uh, target dummy is positioned. But it would have activated another Raiden Thrust. So, just keep that in mind. So, we're going to take a break from these two combos for a second and talk about our jump abilities. Our jump abilities are are some of the most key in terms of damage and what we're going to do to enter the life of the dragon phase of our rotation. So now we have high jump. We have high jump, spine shatter dive, dragon fire dive, star diver. These are our four jumps. We also have elusive jump, but it doesn't take damage. It doesn't do any damage. All it does is do a backflip uh in a, away from like the enemy so we're not going to be talking about that ability so let's begin by talking about high jump high jump does an attack potency of 400 but when used you return to the original position after the uh, after the uh the initial attack so we're going to target the enemy and i'm going to show you guys what that means we're going to start from right here and i'm going to use high jump as you guys see, we jumped and landed right back in the same spot before we used it. We never want to use high jump when we're far away from the enemy. You always want to use high jump when you're close by. Because when you're far away from the enemy, you are animation locked until the move is fully complete. So, you will not be able to move at all during that whole animation and you have to run still you still have to run to the enemy so you want to use this close to the enemy do not open with high jump or any jump in that matter well i'm not going to say any jump the only jump i can recommend opening with only if you already have blood of the dragon activated is shatter dive shatter dive is pretty much the complete opposite of high jump it, does an, it only does an attack potency of 240, 
It is a off, off global cooldown ability. It just does an attack potency of 240. So it might not seem a lot, but do having the plus 30% uh 30% buff, it does do a substantial uh like a more substantial amount of damage. So, and the last next jump we have is Dragonfire Dive. So Dragonfire Dive does an attack potency of 380, but is a AoE, which means Area of Effect ability, which attacks all of the surrounding enemies. 380 is quite a bit of damage, and it has a 2 minute cooldown. So, you want to always, always keep this in mind, and use this whenever you are able to. So, those are our 3 main jump abilities, but we also have star diver as you see it's grayed out we are unable to use it at this time the only way we are able to use it is if we're under the effect of life of the dragon so it this does an attack potency of 600 i'm going to explain this now because when we're able to use it i will not have time to explain it so it's it so this is a fire based ability just like star dive which is also a fire based ability this does an attack potency of 600 and also attacks every enemy in the area, but it does 30% less of the total, like of all, for all the uh, remaining enemies. So this is our most powerful ability and one of the most powerful abilities in the game. So this is what we're aiming to get at the end of the rotation, our whole rotation. So we have high jump, uh, Spine Shatter Dive, Dragonfire Dive, Star Diver. Now, you always want to make sure you use all of those when under effect of Blood of the Dragon. And one more thing we are going to talk about is Mirage Dive. Mirage Dive does an attack potency of 300 and gives us one get uh, one gaze for gate yeah one gaze for our Dragon Gaze. So, if you're wondering what a dra the Dragon Gauge is, I'll explain. Let's start from the beginning, and we're going to start from the beginning and go into our first high jump so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. So, let's begin. That is some bowel. Some of this. That. That. We got Raiden Thrust, Thrust, alright, and then make sure you hit these other two. I sometimes forget to hit these last two. Alright, so we have High Jump and Mirage Dive, which gives us this first eye. We need two eyes in order to activate Life of the Dragon. So, we got that, we can activate our two these. And now we want to activate Chaos Thrust again. And now you want to keep using your positionals. And keep doing this. Activate that again. Full Thrust again. The two moves. And now we can activate our Life of the Dragon. Because now that we did two high jumps, we are now able to activate Life of the Dragon when we have two eyes. Now, I did Garrus Gogol. It does an, it's a line AoE that does an attack potency of 300. I want to use this really fast before this uh, meter runs out, but we do have 30 more seconds because you can use this. Uh, you can keep, you can keep using this. Um, so you're getting, just in case your game it doesn't run out. But Garrus Gogol, you want to make sure you use that alongside High Jump and Mirage Dive. But when, you, you're, when you're on your uh, first eye, when you're on your second eye, when you're about to do your second eye, you want to use Mirage Dive last. You want to use Mirage Dive first, Garrus Gogol last at all times. So, now it's time for us to activate our Garrus Gogol so we can activate Life of the Dragon. So, let's begin that. So, there's Gogo again, and now we have uh, uh, Nestron. Let's activate that. Let's turn it red. 
and now we're able to activate Star Shatter Dive, which is the end of our rotation. A lot, now, you want to keep using all of your abilities you already have. Nothing has changed, but you just want to make sure you always hit that as soon as you can. You are oh, and you are also able to use Nestron a total of, I believe, three times during your Life of the Dragon phase. So, those are all the abilities that you have to worry about, your attacking abilities that you have to worry about during your rotation. But, we are not done yet. Now we have our buffs I'm going to explain to you. There are four main buffs that are super important in, in terms of damage dealing. Let's talk about the most important one, in my opinion, Dragon Sight. Now, Dragon Sight grants you a right eye, which is to yourself that increases your attack damage dealt by plus 10 for cent. But also you are able to target a party member and give them the left eye of sight. And their attack uh, opponents, they're, they're, they get a, a, a damage buff increased by 5%. Now, 5% might not seem like a lot, but believe me, they're also going through damage, uh, damage buffs. So, all of what they're going through plus the extra 5% adds up way, way, way over time. It lets you know that you're a team player, lets them know that, you know, uh, you're giving out buffs to the party. You're not hogging all the all the buffs for yourself because you are able to use this solely on yourself. You do not have to use a team or a party member in order to use this. You can use it on yourself only, but please, it is beneficial to use it also on a party member, specifically uh, either a samurai. Or uh, a tank. If you don't have any one of those, a ninjas will do. Any DPS will really do. But try to use it to on the strongest DPS. So let's go over the next buff: Life Surge. Life Surge insists that you get a critical strike on your neck on your uh, the on the weapon skill that you use. So. This is extremely important for your full thrust combo. When you use your full thrust combo and you, you do true thrust, vorpal thrust, you want to always activate life surge before you use full thrust because full thrust is your highest attacking combo. That's not spine shit, that's not star diving. So, let's, uh, for example, you want to do true thrust, vorpal thrust, then activate life surge. And then you get a whopping 42,000 damage from that critical strike off a of life surge alone. This will give you a massive chunk of damage you do not want to miss. And it's only a 45 second cooldown. Extremely important. The next buff that I want to talk about is Lance Charge which increases your attack uh, d damage dealt by 15%. Now, you you want to keep this active generally at all times that you that you can. But I try to wait until after the chaos thrust combo and I kind of even want to wait a little bit longer until the life of the dragon uh, stage of your uh, of your rotation begins because you uh, because plus 15% can go a long way when you're activating your most powerful skills so i kind of like to wait until you get the second eye uh eye gauge open use and then use the strand and then activate slant's charge let me just show you guys what it does this last charge all right sorry about that guys um so now we just got to talking about lance charge increases damage dealt by 15 percent and uh yeah so the next uh buff that i want to talk to you guys which is the last one battle litany now battle litany is people sleep on battle litany it's actually really 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 useful increases critical hit rate to yourself and all nearby party members for 10 percent that is actually nuts 
actually crazy. Things that do high crit rates like Monk and Ninja and all of them, they will benefit extremely from this ability. And uh, for 20 seconds, that is you can do a lot of damage with this in 20 seconds. Now, we're going to activate that, see what it looks like. As you see, it does a wide area of effect move that gives everybody that buff that's in that circle. Now, that is actually the entire concept of the rotation. We do have a little things here and there, like we also have True North, which... <coughs> Sorry about that. We also have True North that nullifies all of the... Uh, uh, all of the directionals that requirements that you uh, have for things like uh, chaos thrust, uh, wheeling thrust, and uh, Fang and claw. Uh, the, I highly recommend using that for bosses that that throw out a lot of AOE abilities where you aren't able to get directly at that spot, which is uh, really useful. Only has a 45 second cooldown for 10 seconds. Definitely put that to use. We also have uh, we also have our AOE abilities: Doom Spike, Sonic Thrust, and Corthian Corthian or uh, yeah Corthian Torment. Now I'm gonna show you guys what these look like real quick. These aren't essential to your rotation. These are just your AOE abilities where you want to attack you know a lot of enemies at the same time. You can use these uh, while under the effect of Blood of the Dragon. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. So, underneath, when you're under the effect of Blood of the Dragon, you want to use uh, Doom Spike. Doom Spike combos into Sonic Thrust, and then Quartz and Torment. And as you see, using Sonic Thrust and Quartz and Torment, it actually increases your maximum Blood of the Dragon gauge for 10 seconds. I actually really like this uh, these AOE uh, these A this AOE combo the most that I've seen so far. I think it looks amazing and actually does quite a bit of damage. Quite a bit of damage. So besides that, that is the complete rotation. So now I'm going to show you guys what it looks like to do it all at the same time. Let us begin. From the beginning all the way to the end, I'm gonna try to go as slow as possible, that uh, so I can you guys to see like the animation for the abilities and stuff like that. So let us begin from True Thrust. Thrust, disembowel, Blood of the Dragon, Chaos Thrust. Make sure you're hitting your positionals as well. You always want to hit your positionals. So do that. You want to hit that. Now you can activate Lance, Lance Charge. You can do that. Jump. And activate the Explosives. Those. That. Okay. Then try to dive. Run inside. Get some bow again. Hit these. Find Cutter Dive. That Raiden Thrust. Peace. Alright. The high jump is ready. Hit the very high jump. This is ready. Got a little one. We're going to keep that up. Keep going. And that right there, you guys, is about all there is to it. That is the complete, well, my personal complete guide to Dragoon. And while you, I forgot to tell you guys, while you're under Life of the Dragon, you are still able to use 
uh, Mirage dies, and you still gain an eye even while under Life of the Dragon, in case you guys were wondering. So, that is indeed the entire rotation that I use. This is my personal rotation that I like to use. I know people do it far different from me. So, Dragoon is a melee DPS job, does extreme damage, is extremely fast paced, and can even look a bit complicated when it, like when new people look at it. But when you start from level one, each one of these abilities are gradually introduced to you. Everything is easily explained. Everything is very well put together with Dragoon. Even me coming back into the game playing Dragoon again, I thought it was going to be a bit more complicated. But coming back, learning the rotations, learning what all these moves do, it is actually very, very simple. It's, well, I wouldn't say very simple, but it's pretty simple. It is, has amazing raid utility with Dragon Sight, Battle Litany, and all those moves. Also has a, a amazing amount of AoEs and does a ton of damage, especially with it's one of the most powerful moves in the game, Dragon, uh, not Dragon Fire, a uh, Star Diver. Well, uh, in terms of difficulty, I would put this in a in around mid or a high tier difficulty. It is pretty. It is a bit difficult for new players that level boost to want to to want to get to use Dragoon. Um, but in terms of you uh, usefulness, every class is useful. But I'm just gonna say in terms of usefulness, I definitely have to put this in a S tier spot. It does everything a raid and dungeon party needs utility damage a vast amount of aoe's every you you name it it is amazing in terms of damage it is this slowly right this is right behind the samurai in terms of overall damage it is probably the second or third highest dps class in the game melee dps class in the game i believe samurai is first and it is ninja or dragoon uh, to, uh making that second and third spot i believe so would i recommend it absolutely it, and his jump abilities look amazing the animations for this class look great and all of its armor in the game is specific for this class alone Nobody else in this game will look like you unless they're already a Dragoon. They don't share armor with Samurais, they don't share armor with any other class. And I absolutely love the Lance. I love the Lance. Lances look amazing to me. So, that is my rough tutorial on the Dragoon for patch 5.5. Uh, let me guys know what you think. And I might redo this in, uh, the, in in the future to show you guys like a more updated, if I change anything, a more updated rotation, a more clear rotation. I know I probably explained these a bit rough, but for my first time doing this, I just I wanted to show you guys what how I play this, what what I like about it. Absolutely love it. It's my favorite class in the game. I strongly recommend playing Final Fantasy, uh, you guys. Like I strongly recommend it. It is one of the best MMOs, if not the best MMO out there right now. It is topping WoW, topping every MMO out there, and topping games in general. The story is amazing, and I can only say positive things about it. I can only say positive things. But I think that's where we're going to end it off. Uh, Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below. Let, let me know what you guys think and what you guys want to see in the game next i'm thinking about doing the same kind of video for gunbreaker next let me guys know what you think about that so without further ado i will see you guys on the next video stay safe and stay smooth